and welcome to today's webinar. Thank you very much for uh, joining. Uh, today I'll be talking about introduction to Amazon CloudFront, uh, one of the AWS services. Uh, first, let me uh, you know quickly introduce myself. I'm Nihar Bihani. I'm a product manager here uh, at Amazon Web Services uh, on the Amazon CloudFront team, and uh, uh, I'll just walk you through some of the basic concepts of uh, Amazon CloudFront, talk about uh, a variety of different customers that are using CloudFront uh, today, uh, talk about some of the technical concepts and benefits that CloudFront provides, um, and then uh, we'll do some Q&A towards the end. All right, so uh, let's uh, quickly run through the agenda. Um, I'll start by talking about uh, CDN generally and what benefits uh, a CDN provides. CDN uh, is short for Content Delivery Network, uh, which is what Amazon CloudFront is. Uh, I'll uh, then uh, walk you through an overview of Amazon CloudFront itself, uh, the content delivery service uh, at, that AWS has. Um, I'll talk a little bit about how CloudFront works and the benefits CloudFront provides, uh, some customer examples uh, that you will see throughout the presentation. We'll talk a little bit about pricing towards the end. Um, so in terms of uh, CDN benefits, uh, the, the easiest way I thought to describe what a CDN is and how it provides benefits uh, to you uh, and primarily to your viewers who are trying to access your content, um, I just thought I'd show you uh, the map of all of uh, CloudFront's uh, current edge locations. So a content delivery network um, has a network of edge locations around the world and takes advantage of these edge locations to cache content locally close to your viewers. So if you have a global viewer base uh, that are trying to visit your application or your website, uh, then a CDN like CloudFront can use um, a number of locations that we have in North America, in Europe, uh, a location in South America, a number of locations in Asia, as well as one in Australia, uh, and cache your content locally uh, close to your viewers. Uh, today, Amazon CloudFront has 43 edge locations, uh, and we continue to add new locations uh, to, uh, to this map of the world um, wherever uh, we see higher latencies uh, so that we can uh, lower, the, uh, lower the latency for your viewers uh, uh, wherever they happen to be. So, you know, a CDN primarily gives your viewers low latency, good, great performance. But there are some other benefits as well. With low latency and better performance, you will see uh, your viewers more engaged with your content and with your websites. Uh, you will see search engine optimization benefits, uh, so that search engine uh, crawlers and bots can actually um, cache content from your site uh, and uh, include that in the, in the search engine results. Um, and this becomes especially important when you are serving uh, secure content uh, to end users because, for example, in a checkout pipeline where uh, conversion can really get impacted uh, with latency, uh, or if you're serving personalized content to your viewers where uh, requests need to go all the way back to your origin web server, um, having um, taking advantage of a, an, a CDN like CloudFront uh, can really help uh, optimize performance for, uh, for your content. So uh, what is CloudFront? Uh, in a nutshell, CloudFront gives you five core benefits. Uh, CloudFront can help make your web applications faster, can help, help make your applications scale better with the global network, uh, more available uh, with the redundancy that's already built into the global network, uh, easier to manage with the, the tools and the APIs that we make available, uh, and your applications cost less and we'll talk about that later on um, as well. So one thing I do want to highlight here is that these are all benefits that are not niche benefits. Um, these benefits can apply to your entire application and not just the static content on your application, such as the images of the JavaScript files. These benefits can apply uh, to your dynamic content, to your video content, or streaming content. Um, so we will walk through each of these benefits in more detail uh, later on in the in the presentation. So the the key uh, sort of uh, tenets of CloudFront, the key um, you know, uh, benefits that CloudFront provides, 
what, what I hear from customers frequently are three things. One is it's very simple to use. Uh, with a simple do-it-yourself configuration, we provide a web management console. Uh, Cloudflare is included in the AWS management console. You don't need to hire any uh, ex ex expensive consultants um, or partners who need to configure the CDN for you. Uh, you don't need to learn any proprietary languages or write any custom code. Uh, so it's fairly simple to use. Um, second is it's integrated with other AWS services. So if you're already using services such as Amazon EC2 or Amazon S3, CloudFront works really well with those AWS services. Um, we connect to uh, the, all the AWS regions with uh, from from CloudFront Edge locations with, on uh, network on network paths that are closely monitored and optimized for performance, uh, as well as uh, with CloudFront and using other AWS services together, you can take advantage of, advantages of um, uh, AWS resources and tools such as CloudFormation or Amazon Beanstalk. And finally, it's the low cost. Uh, there are no set of fees. Uh, there are no ongoing uh, monthly maintenance fees. Um, you, you only pay for the requests that you serve from Amazon CloudFront and the data that you transfer out of Amazon CloudFront. Uh, so the pricing is very simple and it's low cost. It's pay for what you use and pay as you go, uh, which is um, very similar uh, to uh, the way you pay for all other AWS services. So one thing that I uh, that I wanted to point out as we get started here is uh, that the approach we've taken with CloudFront, which is similar to the approach uh, we take with all other AWS services, is we start um, small uh, and nimble. Uh, so when we launched CloudFront in 2009, uh, actually at the end of 2008, we just had 14 edge locations. Um, and today we have a total of 43 edge locations. So over the last four years, we have added uh, all, you know, many edge locations in, in new countries and new continents and expanded the scope of the service. Um, we also, when we launched, we only had HTTP as the only uh, option to deliver content. And then uh, in 2010, uh, you know, we added, uh, uh, you know, more capabilities to CloudFront. We added even more capabilities in 2011. And along the way, we, uh, as you can see in the red, uh, highlighted in red there, we also continuously um, dropped prices of our service as we uh, grew bigger and as we had the benefits of scale, uh, we lowered our costs and decided to pass those benefits on to, to customers. Then in 2012, um, you know, we added a number of uh, you know, more edge locations as well as new features and functionality, including uh, support for live streaming, support for dynamic content delivery. Um, and, and as you can also see, progressively, we are launching more and more features and locations um, as we go further um, uh, you know, in time on this chart. And then in 2013, uh, a couple of things I'd highlight earlier this year, we dropped prices again for origin fetches. If you're using Amazon EC2 or S3 as your origin server, uh, any time CloudFront, a CloudFront edge location goes to EC2 or S3, um, those services will charge you a lower fee for data transfer to CloudFront. Uh, we also added support for custom SSL certificates earlier this year, which was a highly requested feature by a lot of our customers. Um, so we're not stopping. In fact, the, the, you know, the, the key takeaway from this slide is that we're, uh, we're actually accelerating our uh, progress in terms of the features and functionality um, that we're launching, and we'll continue to do more and, uh, and add uh, more things to the service. And, and we really ask for your feedback uh, in helping us prioritize our roadmap uh, so that we understand what are the most important things that you need for us to add to our service. And over time, one of the things that we've seen as we've added uh, more features uh, as well as more locations is we've seen uh, more and more customers start to use uh, the CloudFront service for content delivery. Um, Here's a variety of customers that you can see. It's a busy slide, and I won't go through every single customer here, but um, you know, customers here are using CloudFront for static content delivery, for dynamic content delivery, as well as on-demand and live streaming of media or video content. Um, so there's a whole spectrum of, uh, of customers, as you can see here, as you can see here, including um, you know, Amazon.com itself, uh, the retailer. Um, 
you know, IMDB, Sega, the software company, um, uh, Samsung, Public Broadcasting Service, Earth Networks, and many others. So I've, I've mentioned static and dynamic content a couple of times. So I wanted to take a, a minute and describe what I mean there. Um, so this, this is a screenshot of uh, the Amazon.com homepage. And I just wanted to point out uh, the examples of static and dynamic content on this page. So as you can see up at the top, the first smaller circle um, that says dynamic. Um, so that uh, the, the circle says Jared's Amazon.com. Jared is a colleague of mine. This is his homepage. Uh, on Amazon.com, and it's personalized for him. So you can see his name appear uh, there. So that's an example of personalized or dynamic content. And then you see the picture of Morton Family, the TV show, um, and uh, that's marked static because every visitor to this page gets that same static image. So that static image can be cached by uh, a, CD, a CDN like CloudFront. Uh, but the dynamic content needs to be personalized and updated with each request. So most modern websites today have both a mix of static and dynamic content. Um, and I just wanted to sort of explain what I mean by those concepts as I, as I go through the presentation. So again, examples of static content are images, media, uh, cascading style sheets, JavaScript files. Um, it's, it's things that don't change from user to user. So we have a number of features uh, for delivering static objects and a variety of customers using these features. Uh, so just regular HTTP and HTTPS file delivery for downloading images, JavaScript or CSS, or even large file downloads such as software downloads, antivirus updates, uh, and so on. Uh, we also provide security features such as private content and signed URLs. With private content uh, and signed URLs, you can restrict who accesses and is able to download your content from the CDN. Um, so you can uh, restrict access based on IP address and or limit it by time uh, so that only users, only visitors that you authorize are able to, uh, are able to download your content from CloudFront. We also provide uh, programmatic invalidation where you can um, issue an invalidation uh, API command or use our management console and invalidate an op a static object or an image that may be cached incorrectly uh, and is now cached uh, on the CloudFront network. Uh, we give you uh, access logs uh, that we put in an S3 bucket, an Amazon S3 bucket that you specify. These access logs have uh, the full record of every single a request that is made for your content uh, from any CloudFront Edge location around the world. Um, and we make these access logs available to you so you can process them and understand the behavior of your visitors, um, what files they're downloading, um, you know, where are they downloading from, and, and things like that. And there's a number of partners uh, who you can work with uh, who already have tools that can take CloudFront access logs and give you uh, very meaningful charts and reports. And then finally, we, we do give you full control uh, to your CloudFront configuration via uh, APIs. Uh, most of our customers prefer to use the management console, the, the UI that we make available, uh, but there are a number of customers who also like to use the programmatic API access and, and build um, uh, CloudFront configuration into their applications. And then uh, dynamic content uh, is the, the interactive or the personalized portion of, uh, of the website. And it's uh, usually created on the fly for each user. So the examples here are news uh, or news updates, uh, including uh, you know, breaking news uh, or personalized news, uh, weather updates and weather alerts, um, which are, again, uh, for the geographic uh, area that you're in. Um, sports scores uh, for your favorite sports team or personalized sports update for you. Uh, social media, uh, where you're interacting with just your circle of friends. Uh, advertising, which is targeted based on your preferences. Um, stock codes that are changing very frequently. Um, and of course, e-commerce and, and travel websites where um, you have a shopping cart and, and you're uh, customizing your own uh, shopping basket uh, for purchase. 
and then a variety of features that we provide for serving dynamic content through CloudFront as well. Um, we uh, we one of the key things that helps with serving dynamic content is the optimized connections uh, between CloudFront X locations and your origin servers, so that um, the request when, uh, for your dynamic content, which always has to go back all the way to the origin server, can be served faster when proxied through CloudFront versus your users going directly to the origin servers. Um, we also provide multiple cache behaviors and multiple origin servers that you can configure. Um, so you can serve all types of content on your website um, and specify how long and um, how each type of content should be cached uh, and what the origin server should be for that content. And you can do that using um, URL path match. So for instance, you can say for star.jpg, which is all of my images, go to the S3 bucket and cache that for X amount of time. And then for star.php, which is my uh, dynamic content generated by my web server, uh, go to the Elastic Load Balancer or the EC2 instance where my web server is running and don't cache that at all. Uh, we also give you uh, query string parameters and HTTP cookie support, and you can uh, optionally include uh, both of these uh, to be a part of the cache key for your um, web page or for your object. So when checked, uh, either the query string parameters and or cookies will be included uh, as part of the cache key, and you can customize your pages for different values of query strings or cookies. Uh, custom SSL certificates, so you can actually um, use your own SSL certificate on the CloudFront network. Uh, you provide us with your SSL certificate and we uh, uh, deploy that to all of our edge locations worldwide so that when we see an SSL request um, from a viewer using your own domain name, uh, we can serve your SSL certificate and establish that SSL connection with the viewer. And then finally, Zone Apex support, something that we recently launched where you can um, use CloudFront along with uh, AWS's DNS service, Route 53, to um, point not just um, www.yoursite.com to CloudFront, but also just yoursite.com without the, the Zone Apex or without the www. So typically, uh, in the modern websites, we see um, uh, an architecture that looks somewhat like this, where um, static and dynamic content are really um, separated by using different domains. So viewers make two different connections from their browsers, uh, one with the www.example.com domain that goes directly uh, to an Elastic Load Balancer or, uh, or, you know, or Amazon EC2 instances. And the, and the second connection is to cdn.example.com, which uh, goes to a uh, content delivery network such as CloudFront with Amazon S3 holding the authoritative copies and serving as the origin. What, what we've done uh, over the past um, year or so is change that equation for you uh, to really simplify the architecture uh, and pro help give you the benefits of CloudFront for all of your content, both static and dynamic content. So you can now use an architecture that looks like this, where your viewers are using a single domain name, www.example.com, to download all your content. And that domain name is pointing to a CloudFront distribution with multiple origin servers configured on the back end. So you don't need to change your back end origin servers. Your static content can still live in the Amazon S3 bucket your dynamic content can still be served by the Elastic Load Balancer or your Amazon EC2 instances. But you can configure CloudFront so that CloudFront knows which origin to go to for what type of content. So I frequently hear from customers uh, when, I, when I talk about dynamic content uh, is, well, can dynamic content really be served through a CDN like CloudFront, or would CloudFront be helpful in serving, in making my dynamic content any faster? Um, and you know, there are some some sort of myths that have come up uh, over time as I've talked to customers uh, that I'd like to address. Um, you know, here. So 
the first thing, uh, you know, the first myth that I hear about is none of my HTML pages are cacheable. And when I hear that, I often sit down with customers, and when we look through the architecture, uh, we, you know, we realize that, well, there are many pages on a typical website that can actually be cached, uh, even if it is for a short period of time, such as your search results page. You can use a query string parameter and enable query string parameters and actually uh, cache that page along with the query string parameter value uh, so that all subsequent searches with the same um, search terms can be served uh, locally from cache. Uh, the second uh, myth that I think of is uh, my HTML pages are customized for each viewer, um, so they cannot be cached. And again, using cookies and or query strings uh, as part of the cache key, uh, you can actually cache a lot of the customized pages. Uh, a good example here is weather pages, where weather is certainly customized for your zip code, um, but you know, zip code can be included as a cookie or a query string as part of that page so that um, if there is a weather event, for instance, and all the residents of that zip code decided to go to the weather site and um, check on the weather for, um, for their zip code, they would all get uh, fast performance uh, and the CDN will help scale uh, for all of those viewers uh, without impacting your origin infrastructure. And finally, there are certainly pages that uh, many sites have that are truly personalized and unique for each user. Uh, an example of this was the Jared's Amazon.com um, you know, homepage personalization. So a CDN won't be useful there. Um, and, and there, um, you know, there are network and path optimizations that CloudFront has um, put in place, which allow CloudFront to speed up the the truly dynamic content, such as personalized pages, um, when the request is proxied through CloudFront versus going directly to the origin server. So, uh, you know, as we saw uh, earlier in the deck, uh, the, the five key benefits of CloudFront, CloudFront can help make your applications uh, faster, scale better, more available, easier to manage, and cost less. And I'd like to spend a couple of minutes on each one of these talk about how CloudFront can help do that and some customer examples on how customers are benefiting from, uh, from using CloudFront. So in terms of uh, the performance problem, um, the way I think about this is in terms of a simple equation, which is anytime you have to go long distance over the internet, and when you combine that with a poor network path where there's a lot of packet loss, uh, that results in slow load times for downloading your content. Uh, so your viewers will see a poor experience because of the network distance and the network uh, latency because of poor uh, performance. And the way CloudFront helps um, change that equation is with the 43 edge locations that we have today dispersed worldwide, uh, your viewers are actually connecting to a CloudFront Edge location over a short distance because uh, chances are that there is an Edge location very close to them in terms of um, internet network latency. And then that Edge location goes back to your origin web server over an optimized path. So the combination of those two allows for a faster load time uh, for, for your viewers. So you can see a little bit more detail um, uh, in this image that we saw earlier where your viewers are going to Amazon Cloud for an Edge location to download your dynamic and static content using the www.example.com domain name. Uh, so when the viewers connect to a Cloud for an Edge location, uh, given the Edge location is so close to the viewers, uh, they see low latency um, uh, and therefore minimize the distance over which packet loss occurs and retransmits occur. And also the TCP IP window sizing, um, CloudFront advertises a larger window size, uh, so that helps viewers download more content in a single round trip. Then the Amazon CloudFront Edge location connects back to your origin web servers, uh, whether that's the dynamic content or your static content in S3, uh, over persistent connections. So the Edge location does not need to uh, uh, establish a new TCP connection for every viewer that requests content from your website. Uh, 
in addition to that, the network paths that CloudFront uses uh, to go back to the origin servers are monitored and optimized for performance. So the combination of uh, some of these optimizations, which you don't have to do anything to turn on, these are already turned on by default for you, uh, these uh, allow these benefits, these optimizations allow you uh, to get uh, lower latency when your viewers around the world are trying to download content from CloudFront. So I wanted to show a customer example here. I mentioned Amazon.com. Um, Amazon CloudFront had to go win the business of Amazon.com, uh, the retail website, just like any other CDN and we did that by uh, showing performance um, of, Amazon .com, of Amazon CloudFront relative to the other CDNs that Amazon.com had been using. And uh, as you can see in this chart, um, at the Amazon.com latency, uh, which is the, the green line at the bottom of the chart, um, the, the lower the line here the, on this chart, the, the better performing is the CDN. Um, and you can see that Amazon um, CloudFront performs 7% better than um, the next best CDN that uh, Amazon.com was using, and uh, CloudFront performed 51% better than um, the the other CDN that uh, Amazon.com was using. So, and and this is uh, these are measurements that Amazon.com collects uh, themselves. So these are not uh, this, this is not data collected by CloudFront. Um, the, the retail website themselves did, did these measurements and saw the performance uh, benefits that CloudFront could provide. And so today, CloudFront serves the vast majority of uh, Amazon.com's retail CDN traffic for both uh, HTTP and SSL traffic. CloudFront can also help make your applications uh, scale better. So uh, a great example here is um, the uh, the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory folks. Uh, they're a great AWS customer, and uh, you know they used CloudFront recently for, um, or it's almost a year ago now, for uh, the the website that uh, presented the uh, the landing of the the Mars uh, rover Curiosity and all of the images that were sent by the Curiosity rover from Mars were displayed um, via CloudFront. Um, the entire website was delivered over CloudFront. Um, so the way CloudFront helped scale uh, the JPL website is by caching static content at the edge. So just by the fact that CloudFront cached the images, uh, anytime a new image was received from Mars uh, by the and sent by the Curiosity rover, there was a flood of um, folks that wanted to come in and view those images. So to be able to scale uh, for these viewers, CloudFront was able to, um, uh, you know, cache and deliver those images uh, from its global net, uh, network of locations. Uh, in addition, uh, CloudFront can help with scaling by offloading the connection setup as well as the SSL negotiation to the edge locations. So now, your, since your viewers are connecting to CloudFront edge locations, um, all of that TCP connection, uh, as well as the SSL negotiation, is having is is happening with CloudFront edge servers, and your origin web servers are not seeing the um, the load from all of that traffic. And then finally, we do maintain uh, persistent connections from CloudFront edge locations back to the origin server, uh, as well as collapse forward uh, the requests we receive for the same object at the same time from your viewers um, back to the origin server as a single request. So really, even though you know a thousand viewers may be asking for the exact same image um, from your website uh, from a single CloudFront location, CloudFront, and if CloudFront doesn't have that image, CloudFront will go back to your origin server with you know one or just a, a small number of requests, and not uh, your your origin web servers won't see the the entire 1,000 of yours hitting them directly. Uh, here's another example of, uh, of scalability where um, you know, a customer that was delivering uh, video banners or, or video banner ads uh, you know, in conjunction with a, a TV show, and you can see how the, uh, the volume of data that this 
customer delivered spiked to over 60 gigabits per second. Um, you know, at at two o'clock, um, you know, this is Pacific time, so five o'clock Eastern, um, when uh, when the show was live uh, on television, and everyone wanted to go see this video banner ad because it was advertised during the show. And then the same thing happened on the East Coast later on, um, um, the same day when the show was again advertised, uh, or the banner was again advertised on the East Coast. And the, the key point here is that at CloudFront was able to instantaneously scale up for this customer, uh, as well as scale down uh, without any impact to the customer's origin infrastructure. And from a CloudFront perspective, this level of traffic um, really you know, did not have any impact on uh, the, the CloudFront network either. Uh, we actually found out about this event um, you know, the next day when we saw that a customer scaled up to over 60 gigabits per second uh, and then scaled back down and everything went smoothly. So here's a, here's a little bit more detail about uh, the uh, the NASA uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory uh, website with serving content from Mars uh, and using Cloud for Edge locations to deliver that website. Um, again, uh, the the problem that they were really trying to solve is the massive sudden increase in web traffic. And they really wanted a way to scale um, the website to be able to handle that traffic. And they utilized a variety of AWS services to host uh, their website, including Amazon CloudFront, to deliver um, the images as well as videos to um, hundreds of thousands of uh, visitors to that site. CloudFront can also help make your applications more available. And availability is uh, really uh, one of the core concepts that, that CloudFront has uh, and, and is architected. CloudFront, uh, the CloudFront network is architected for high availability. Um, we have redundancy built into the network. So as I mentioned, we have 43 edge locations today. and you know, uh, one or more edge locations can go offline either because uh, we are having an operational issue or because uh, we're doing software updates. Uh, but that does not impact um, the experience of your end users, of your visitors, because they get routed to the next best edge location uh, that is able to serve their serve them with the lowest latency possible. So CloudFront is architected. Uh, for high availability and durability. Um, in addition, CloudFront will continue to serve cached content even when your origin server is unavailable. Uh, and this is a lesser known feature of CloudFront, but um, this also helps with availability where CloudFront can serve um, you know, content uh, even though it's not able to contact the origin. Uh, whereas if you're visitors were going directly to the origin servers, they would actually get um, origin not available errors, and your site wouldn't be available. And then finally, CloudFront does provide an availability SLA, uh, which is uh, which is up on our website, um, and uh, we guarantee a certain level of availability uh, through our SLA. So you see the logo of Toronto Star um, you know, on, on this slide, uh, and Toronto Star is a large newspaper um, and a media company in uh, Canada. And uh, one of the key benefits that they got from using CloudFront is the, the high availability that CloudFront was able to provide for their websites. Another customer example I'd like to highlight here is PBS, or Public Broadcasting Service. Um, and uh, they've been using, uh, PBS has been using CloudFront uh, for, for a long time now. Uh, and uh, the way PBS got started with using CloudFront is they found an issue with their existing uh, CDN provider or their previous CDN, CDN provider where they saw high error rates and performance issues, which was um, causing them availability uh, concerns for their visitors. And uh, PBS, as a result, started to test a um, combination of Amazon S3 for storage and delivery through CloudFront. Um, and that resulted in 50% lower error rates as compared to their previous CDN. So there's a, there's a great video testimonial, actually. There's a link there um, uh, you know, that you can find on YouTube and, uh, and view uh, and, and hear uh, 
PBS and, and what they say about using CloudFront and other AWS services. CloudFront can uh, make your applications easier to manage. And the ease of management is something that is true across all AWS services. Um, let's see here. Okay. Um, you know, and particularly CloudFront where uh, customers such as Earth Networks that run the weather bug applications have told us that um, you know, one of the key reasons they moved to Amazon CloudFront from their previous CDN provider is because they did not need to write any custom code. Um, and it was just very easy to manage their configuration through self-service by using the management console or by using uh, the, the APIs that CloudFront provides, um, uh, you know, and, and without needing to hire any professional services or uh, expensive consultants. There's also uh, no need to split up your website across multiple domains. Um, so you don't need to split up your www.example.com and cdn.example.com or your HTTPS versus your HTTP uh, content. Uh, CloudFront supports multiple origin servers and multiple cache behaviors, making it really easy for you to architect your site um, uh, such that you can deliver your entire site, both static and dynamic content through CloudFront Network. And finally, the, the sign-up process is self-service. Um, you know, you can get started any time. Uh, it's a great way to test the performance and, uh, you know, test integration of CloudFront uh, with your applications. There's uh, just a screenshot of uh, the AWS Management Console where you can uh, go and uh, self-service, configure Amazon CloudFront, create a distribution. The process of creating a distribution takes, uh, you know, 15 minutes or so. Uh, and uh, at the end of that process, you are given a, a DNS name that you can use in your application, or you can uh, create a CNAME uh, with, with a friendly DNS name that you may have and point that to your CloudFront distribution, and then use your own domain name uh, on your application and still serve content through CloudFront. So, uh, you know, I've already mentioned a little bit about Earth Networks, but um, Earth Networks also uses CloudFront's dynamic content features to customize the uh, experience of their end users uh, by distributing local information, such as, uh, you know, weather data customized to their viewers uh, locally uh, in near real time. And, and weather, if you think about it, is, is you know, truly a dynamic uh, set of data that can change very frequently uh, and especially when there are uh, weather alerts, uh, you know, or storms that uh, Earth Networks would need to keep their applications up to date with the latest data, um, being able to serve content as quickly as possible uh, becomes critical for their business. And uh, with Amazon CloudFront, they uh, saw 50% reduction in uh, their CDN costs from their previous provider, uh, but they did not see any reduction in the performance that uh, after switching from their previous provider. Uh, and in addition, uh, CloudFront was uh, much easier to use as they didn't need to write or maintain any custom code. And finally, CloudFront can uh, make your applications cost less. And a uh, few things I want to highlight here. First, uh, CloudFront charges the same price for serving all types of content, dynamic content, static content, uh, streaming content. It's the same data transfer fees and request fees that you pay that are published on our website. Um, so we don't differentiate, uh, you know, in terms of making dynamic content a premium product or more expensive. Uh, we really price our services and our features based on our costs. And um, we, you know, have a philosophy of passing on uh, savings uh, onto customers, so anytime we see cost savings because of scale, uh, we lower prices and pass those savings on to customers. The preferential pricing between AWS origin servers such as S3 and EC2 to a CloudFront Edge location is also a great benefit that we added uh, earlier this year. So all the origin fetches from CloudFront um, when you're using an AWS origin um, are 
uh, priced at up to 83% lower than um, when using another CDN with S3 or EC2. Glufferin is also generally less expensive than serving data out of S3 or EC2 directly uh, for any volumes over 10 terabytes a month. And you can see that uh, when you compare the public prices that Glufferin offers uh, on our web page with the public pricing available for S3 or EC2 uh, on their websites. And finally, the reserve capacity pricing is another option that Cloudflare makes available where you can um, you can choose not to use the public prices that we make available without any commitments, and instead you have um, a volume level uh, every month that you are able to commit to. Uh, so you know, feel free to reach out to us, and uh, we can um, give you the reserve capacity pricing option for reducing your rates um, uh, for using Cloudflare service. And uh, a good customer example here is uh, Samsung, uh, who runs uh, their Smart Hub application for their smart TVs using uh, Amazon CloudFront. And uh, one of the key values that they get from uh, using AWS and CloudFront is reducing their IT costs. Um, and with AWS's low and pay-as-you-go pricing, um, as well as the reliability of the services, Samsung decided to use um, you know, AWS as well as CloudFront uh, to lower their cost and provide a better user experience for the end users. I, I did want to highlight uh, and spend a couple of minutes talking about uh, live and on-demand streaming. CloudFront uh, does offer a variety of options for delivering your video and media content uh, to end users. Uh, taking advantage of the global network of locations and caching your video files closer to, to viewers. Um, we support a variety of different uh, protocols um, and a variety of uh, device types that you can deliver content to using CloudFront. Uh, so from an HTTP perspective, you can um, uh, use uh, Adobe HTS or Apple HLS. Um, you, know, you can also do Microsoft uh, Smooth Streaming or MPEG Dash. So these are all uh, viable options uh, and possible today with the existing CloudFront service. Uh, you can also use uh, RTMP or the real-time uh, uh, media protocol uh, for flash clients for video on demand. Um, and uh, we actually have um, Adobe Flash PTS servers uh, running at our edge locations. So um, you can you can do on-demand streaming of video content uh, using RTMP. And all of these options, one thing that you'll find common here is they are very simple to configure. Uh, for live streaming using either Adobe HDS or Apple HLS or Microsoft Smooth, um, you can use the AWS CloudFormation script that we provide and a tutorial uh, to easily and quickly configure a live streaming stack and get up and running in no time. Um, for video on demand, you can upload your .flv files to Amazon S3 and create a streaming distribution to stream your video content via RTMP. So um, there's multiple options available for live and on demand streaming, and they're all um, um, you know, there's a lot more detail in the CloudFront uh, on the CloudFront website as well as the CloudFront Developer Guide that you can find uh, uh, that helps you configure. Uh, both live as well as on-demand on -demand streaming via CloudFront. Uh, and, and another customer example here is uh, Uplink, uh, who runs their online video platform uh, you know, using AWS services, and they're delivering uh, content for Disney ABC using Amazon CloudFront. Um, and this is uh, on-demand content that they are delivering over CloudFront's HTTP infrastructure um, and uh, you know, get uh, performance as well as cost benefits when using uh, Amazon CloudFront to deliver their video content. And finally, uh, just a quick highlight on the pricing. Uh, pricing is, as I mentioned, available publicly on our website. So you can go and find CloudFront's on-demand pricing uh, 
uh, on the website for both the data transfer as well as requests. Uh, one thing that I want to point out is how you can contact us and get in touch with us about reserved capacity pricing. Um, so there is a contact us link right on the pricing page, and you can click that and reach out to us and describe your use case, and we can work with you to figure out if we can uh, provide you a discounted rate for CloudFront um, where you're able to make a commitment in terms of how much volume you can deliver through the CloudFront service. In the uh, interest of time, I will skip through some of these uh, slides. I think we've covered uh, most of this in the, uh, in the deck already. And uh, I think at this point, we will uh, open it up to questions that you may have. I see that there are already a few questions that have been entered. So please feel free to enter your questions in the questions box, and uh, we'll use the remaining time to answer your questions. Great. Uh, all right, so I'm um, looking at the first question here. Uh, so the first question is from, from Richard. Uh, and the question says, uh, what happens when a site is hit with DOS or denial of service? Is there any protection that will prevent the increased usage from adding to the user's cost? So uh, from a denial of service uh, perspective, that's not something that we talk too much about uh, publicly. Um, but uh, what I can say is that uh, the AWS, uh, you know, AWS takes denial of service uh, very seriously. And uh, we do have a lot of uh, proprietary software as well as hardware infrastructure uh, that we use to protect our services uh, against denial of service attacks. Um, you know, just uh, the fact that you're using a global CloudFront network and the scale that the CloudFront network provides helps uh, uh, withstand, you know, a, a denial of service attack in most cases. Um, you know, from a Purely from a cost perspective, that's something we would work with customers on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, what we do encourage customers to do is uh, sign up for, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, with our uh, premium support offering uh, so that we can uh, work with you if there is a denial of service situation, um, you know, for your content. Um, and uh, we can, uh, you know, work together with you. Uh, to figure out what the right, right courses, uh, as well as uh, discuss the uh, the cost options. Another question uh, from Larry that asks, how long does content remain at an edge location? Um, so the way I would answer that is um, content can uh, remain at an edge location uh, as long or as short of a duration as uh, you would like. Uh, so. CloudFront honors the cache control headers that are set by the origin servers. So when CloudFront goes to your origin web server, whether that's a dynamic uh, web server running on EC2 or a static S3 bucket, um, the web server uh, can set a cache control header with a max age value of uh, you know a few seconds or a few minutes or a few hours at a time, and CloudFront will honor that and. Uh, cache that object for uh, for that period of time. A um, couple of things I want to highlight there. One, um, you know, your your object may be evicted sooner than that time is expired, and that's because CloudFront works on a least frequently used um, basis. Uh, so each edge location will um, keep that content in cache for the duration you specified, um, only if it's requested frequently relative to other uh, objects at that edge location. So it may actually be evicted, in which case CloudFront will have to go back to the origin server to fetch that uh, object again, um, even though you asked for that object to be cached for a certain period of time. And uh, the second thing that I'd like to highlight there is um, that the default time, so if there are no cache control headers set by the origin server, uh, CloudFront will cache an object for a default value of 24 hours. Um, so that's, that, that is uh, in, in our documentation, uh, but I just wanted to highlight that in terms of um, affecting how long CloudFront will cache an object.
Um, there's another question from uh, Ronaldo uh, that says, last time I tried to use CloudFront, uh, which was this year, the post method was not supported. Only get method was supported. Are there plans to support it in the future? So um, I think uh, there is, uh, it's correct, uh, CloudFront today only supports get and head. Uh, so CloudFront is a download only CDN today. Uh, post is uh, something post, put, as well as other HTTP methods are um, something that uh, we hear frequently uh, about from customers. Uh, uh, and for a variety of use cases, um, uh, customers need those methods to be supported as well. So that, that is something that, uh, you know, we are considering. And uh, I don't have any, uh, you know, any updates to share on that uh, just yet. But uh, that is something that, um, um, you know, it's certainly uh, we, something we have heard from customers about and, and is on our uh, roadmap. Uh, one thing I would uh, point out here is that the way our roadmap gets built um, and gets influenced is uh, directly from the feedback that we get from customers like yourselves. So uh, please do contact us and let us know, um, you know, what features uh, you require that are blockers for from you using CloudFront so that we can um, prioritize correctly uh, uh, you know, on our roadmap and add those features. Uh, the other, uh, the other thing that I highlight there, uh, from a feature perspective as well as contacting us, is the the CloudFront uh, discussion forums, which you can find the link to on the CloudFront website. And uh, on those discussion forums, um, you can either start a discussion and uh, you know ask about a particular feature that you. Uh, that you might need, uh, or there's also a, a CloudFront survey that's floating around on the forums that you can fill out, and that's a great way. We look at that survey data regularly, uh, and that's a great way for us to understand uh, what features customers need and how we should prioritize those features. Uh, so a question from Craig that says, do I need to set up subdomains on configure my name server is DNS to serve content from CloudFront. So uh, there's a couple of ways you can uh, serve content from CloudFront. Uh, configuring your own domain name is not a requirement. So when you create a CloudFront distribution, you're given a, a DNS name as a result of that process. Uh, so, you know, once the once the distribution is created, you will receive a, a DNS name such as d123.cloudfront.net. Um, and you can use that DNS name directly uh, in your application, um, and that DNS name will point to your particular CloudFront distribution, and your viewers will be able to download your content using that DNS name. Alternatively, you can actually use your own branding and your own domain name uh, and uh, you know, create a, DNS, uh, a CNAME entry with CloudFront as well as a corresponding DNS entry with your uh, DNS service provider. Uh, and then use that uh, custom domain name, such as www.mysite.com, um, to, uh, to endpoint that to your CloudFront distribution, the d123.cloudfront.net domain name that you were given when you created the distribution. So both options are possible. Uh, neither one is required, it, it, you know, or, or uh, either one is, uh, you know, is usable. It, it just depends on how you want to use um, and how you may want to brand your, uh, your content. Uh, let's see, I'm looking, uh, so please feel free to add other questions to uh, the questions box. Um, another question from Ashish that says, can we set different cache headers for different type of content? Um, yeah, I think uh, I, I would probably need a little bit more detail there, but in general, uh, you can uh, set cache control headers for uh, each object. Um, you know, per object on a per object basis. So each individual object can have their own unique cache control headers, and CloudFront will, will honor those headers and cache that object for the duration of time that you specify for that particular object. I'm not sure if that if that answers your question, Ashish. So feel free to uh, ask a follow up question uh, or reach out to us uh, later on, uh, and we'll be able to answer, uh, answer questions for you.
So uh, another question from uh, Mark, uh, who says that uh, he's interested in hearing more about how to use or leverage CloudFront specifically, specifically for live streaming video uh, and not video on demand. Uh, and then he's also asking what kind of latency delays can I expect for RTMP, HLS, HDS, etc. So uh, yes, you can certainly use CloudFront for um, delivering your live stream or your live event. Um, CloudFront works with a number of um, partners, uh, such as uh, Adobe and uh, Adobe's media server, or uh, Microsoft's uh, IIS server, uh, as well as uh, Wowza and Wowza's media server. And you can use any one of these options uh, and create a CloudFormation stack by following uh, a simple tutorial that uh, we make available in our documentation uh, to deliver your live content over HTTP. Um, in terms of the delays, uh, it, it really depends. So I would encourage you to test uh, what the delay looks like, um, you know, uh, between the uh, sort of the delay from the time you actually upload content into the media server and then it's delivered, uh, it's available via a cloud financial location. Uh, you know, the reason I encourage you to test is uh, because, again, the, the delay can uh, vary based on you know, connection speeds and uh, you know how far the origin server is uh, from a CloudFront location and a number of other variables. Um, and also, uh, it's it's super easy for you to test um, by you know by simply uh, using uh, our management console and, and creating a stack. Uh, and since you pay only for the resources that you use. Um, it should be relatively inexpensive for you to uh, test a live streaming stack and measure the delay that you see that you see when um, when delivering content uh, or live content. I think uh, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, 